On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir presumptive to the Austro-Hungarian throne, was assassinated in the streets of Sarajevo. His death precipitated a conflict that all the major powers had seen and feared on the horizon, the First Great War. It took eight years and tens of millions of deaths for the Central Powers to emerge victorious, but the true cost of the conflict could not be measured solely in time or lives. The Great War had set into motion a series of events that would see the largest transformation of the world order since the fall of Rome. Over the next decade, France, Italy, and the British Isles would fall to revolution and syndicalism, the Americas would spiral further into economic depression, and colonial ambitions would dictate the fate of Asia and Africa. One nation above all, however, had finally gained its place in the sun a nation that the world now looked to for leadership, the German Empire. Founded after the joint victory of the German states during the Franco-Prussian War, the German Empire was immediately one of the most powerful nations in Europe. Its rapid industrialization led to a massive population boom, and by 1900, it had surpassed the United Kingdom to become the largest economy in the world after the United States. Under the masterful tenure of Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, Germany grew to become a global power, establishing colonies in the last unclaimed regions of Africa and Asia. As a colonial power, it often clashed with other imperialist European states, in particular the British Empire. The removal of Chancellor Bismarck set the nation on a more bellicose course of foreign policy. Bismarck's successors were unable to maintain his complex shifting and overlapping alliances that had prevented Germany from becoming diplomatically isolated. When the long-expected conflict against France escalated into the Great War, Germany failed to achieve a rapid capture of Paris and was forced to endure a grinding war of attrition. By 1918, the exhausted German populace made increasing demands for peace and held massive protests. The sinking of an American merchant freighter by a British submarine a year earlier had eased the naval embargo on Germany and made American intervention unlikely, but the nation remained on the brink of defeat. In a final desperate spring offensive, the German army finally broke the French lines in March 1919. By October, with the whole of France faced with civil uprisings and Paris itself under artillery fire, an armistice was hurriedly signed. The French colonial empire was handed over, and the attention of the German military was redirected towards the newly established Soviet Union, which was forced to capitulate in 1920. By 1921, with no way to break the remaining stalemate, the German and British empires signed a so-called Peace with Honor. In 1922, additional treaties were signed with Japan, and the Great War was finally ended. The 1924 Berlin Olympics became a symbol of the nation's new status in the world, and the participation of the United Kingdom signaled that rapprochement between the divided nations of Europe could be expected in the coming years. Instead, the British Isles were soon engulfed in revolution, and their overseas empire collapsed into complete disarray. The Royalists fled to Canada, while Germany took advantage of the situation, seizing the majority of the remaining British colonial possessions. This was achieved at the directive of Chancellor Tirpitz, whose subsequent foreign interventions in China would help stabilize the greatly expanded overseas German territories. A federal parliamentary semi-constitutional monarchy, the German Empire is governed under a unique blend of modern political institutions and ancient royal tradition. The nation is officially defined as a federation of member states, united under the presidency of Prussia. Accordingly, each king of Prussia is automatically granted with the additional title of German Emperor, who serves as the head of state. Among the duties of the Kaiser is the appointment of a Reichskanzler, or imperial chancellor. This chancellor oversees the Bundesrat, a type of federal council made up of representatives from each of the empire's member states. The Bundesrat remains dominated by Prussia, which retains control over 17 votes. Other member states, such as Bavaria and Saxony, control only six and four respectively, while newly integrated territories such as Luxembourg and other smaller states 
are granted only a single vote. While theoretically the highest governing authority in the empire, the Bundesrat shares legislative power with the German parliament, known as the Reichstag. Any German male over the age of 25 is eligible to vote, and a variety of political parties has led to the development of a lively and often chaotic internal political structure. Restrictions remain on the types of parties able to legally operate within Germany. The three largest parties which have dominated elections since the Great War include the leftist Social Democratic Party, supported by the nation's powerful trade unions, the Progressive People's Party, which advocates for the liberalization of the empire, and the German Conservative Party, which represents the interests of the traditional Prussian nobility, conservative Protestants, and the supporters of the Hohenzollern monarchy. The distribution of political authority between the Emperor, Chancellor, Bundesrat, and Reichstag has varied considerably across German history. The Enabling Act in particular, a controversial piece of legislation passed during the tumultuous year of 1918, has allowed the Chancellor to largely circumvent the power of the Reichstag. Such shifts in the balance of power are not uncommon, and it remains possible for any of the major state institutions to exert disproportionate power over the others, especially during the reign of a particularly weak-willed emperor. While in theory separate from the political affairs of the state, the German military has exerted significant control over foreign policy. During the Great War, the armed forces almost completely subsumed civilian authority, turning the nation into essentially a military dictatorship. While such overriding control has been impossible to maintain in peacetime, the German army and German navy remain immensely powerful institutions. The German army is the largest of the empire's military branches and organized around the famous values of Prussian militarism. One of its most critical initiatives is to identify military talent at lower levels and develop it through rigorous academic training and practical experience. Through this method, individuals who display excellence in leadership, organization, and planning are brought to the forefront of individual regiments, divisions, and corps, all the way to the general staff. This emphasis on identifying and evaluating the strengths, weaknesses, and military capabilities of individual soldiers is also utilized at the national level. Through military attachés, attached to diplomatic locations and a network of paid agents, German military planners have access to unparalleled reports documenting the effectiveness of entire countries. While arguably the most powerful and decisive military force at the outset of the Great War, the German army has rapidly improved on the weakest elements of the branch in the intervening years. Issues with decentralized commands and competing military offices across multiple German states have been streamlined, and with them, the inherent equipment and manpower inefficiencies. Despite their victory, the specter of trench warfare that defined the Western Front of the Great War still looms large over the German army, and competing factions have emerged, each with different theories on how to avoid the large-scale carnage which took such a toll on the German populace. Some within the general staff believe that the traditional Prussian doctrine of rapid maneuvers is no longer achievable in modern warfare, and suggest a further emphasis on artillery to break through established defenses. Others are proponents of mechanized warfare, arguing in favor of tanks supported by half-track deployed infantry. While such methods were ineffective during the Great War, advances in technology have made a distinct impression on younger officers. The German Air Force is unique in that it remains a component service of the German Army, likely in part due to its previously lackluster wartime performance. Differing proposals on how to modernize the Air Force have been presented, each based on the idea of quickly achieving air superiority and using bombers and close air support to assist advancing ground forces. The last major branch of the military is the Imperial Navy. Following the Second Battle of Jutland in 1919, it has finally achieved a place of superiority over the British, its traditional rival, and is the single largest navy in the world. Despite its place of prominence, the German navy suffers under convoluted leadership and low levels of support for any major naval rearmament program. The Naval Air Service has grown particularly outdated, 
and there have been talks at various levels recommending it be placed under the command of the Air Force. Now a worldwide imperial power, the German Navy is essential to maintaining authority across its disparate colonies. In addition to relatively minor transfers of territory in continental Europe, in the wake of the Great War, the Empire's holdings have grown to include vast swaths of Africa and Asia. While some strategic areas are directly ruled from Berlin, German authority is more often projected through a network of puppet governments and colonial states, granted varying levels of autonomy. Deutsch Mittelafrika and Deutsch Ostasien, quasi-independent territories, responsible for administrating German colonies in Africa and Indochina respectively, are the German Empire's largest puppet governments. In addition to its colonies, the German Empire maintains dominion over a number of neighboring countries through a network of economic and military alliances. Middle Europa, or Middle Europe, is the largest economic bloc in the world, consisting of the German Empire and its colonies, Flanders Wallonia, the Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, and most of Eastern Europe. Flanders Wallonia, Lithuania, the United Baltic Duchy, White Ruthenia, and the Kingdom of Ukraine are also members of the Reichspakt, a military alliance used to guard against any potential Russian resurgence. Both the Reichspakt and Mitteleuropa suffer from internal problems, as these alliances are based on safeguarding Germany's place of prominence rather than any type of fair trade. Eastern Europe in particular has very little influence in either alliance, and these nations are increasingly dependent on Germany amidst their own growing internal pressures. Abroad, the rise of the Commune of France and the Union of Britain has weakened the German grip over Europe, and the specter of syndicalism spreads almost unchecked. In the East, German military planners look upon the tumultuous Russian nation with unease. Powerful forces have begun to move against President Kerensky, and the wounded Russian colossus has begun to stir once more. Japan remains the empire's greatest rival in the Far East, one that has never been content with the outcome of the Great War. It has made no secret of its desire to seize German colonies in the region, and the overextended German military may be in no position to stop them. The old governments of France and Britain have likewise never forgotten their defeat, and a revitalized Entente, perhaps strengthened by the United States, might one day land their armies across Europe in the hope of liberating their former homelands. For just over a decade, the German Empire has spread its power across the world without fear of reprisal. But the time when Germany, and Germany alone, could dictate the fate of entire nations is ending. The next great war is coming soon. And like the first, it has the potential to change the world in ways that could never be anticipated. Across the historic cities of Prussia, the great savannas of Africa, the distant ports of the Far East, Wherever the Imperial Eagle flies, the citizens of the German Empire have a single, overriding purpose. Guard the balance. Guard the Kaiserreich.